What's going on? It's Keyshawn. Welcome to the inaugural episode of my new show, All Facts, No Breaks Podcast. Joining us for our first episode is All-Pro cornerback from the Chicago Bears, first team pro bowler. That's first team, All-Pro, pro bowler Jalen Johnson of the Chicago Bears. What's up, man? What's up, the big dog? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good to see you. And all I can do say right now is you had an amazing season. Congratulations for your first nod as an all-pro, yes, as well as making your first Pro Bowl. Now, yes, when I played, obviously, the Pro Bowl was in Hawaii. Right. You get to go to Orlando this year. Mm -hmm. The water's a little ways away from there. It's a little more inland. Hawaii would have been a better shot, but at least you did make the Pro Bowl. So, congrats to that. Right. Who you think will win one versus one, me and you, back then? Back in Who would prime. win? Yeah. Win what? Best out of five. Best out of five. How many Anyway. <laughs> How many you think you win <laughs> out of five? I'll probably go, I'll probably win at least four. At least. At least. Stop. Right, we good. It's not Come a route on. you can stop me on, so on. I don't worry about it. If I got a we quarterback that can throw the ball, we now don't even want to get so We don't even want to get it. Yeah, because if I run around and he's throwing a bad ball, you get I ain't never defender. heard a good wide receiver say it depend on the quarterback. But yeah, we because we, he, we can I roll play it with out. seven. Roll you, it. You, you know the quarterbacks <laughs> I play with, man? I play with 17 different dudes, not Justin Fields, but the ones you had before Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. Worse than them. Don't get me started anyway. Pro Football Focus ranked you as the best coverage defender in 2022. Uh, Three. 23. Yeah, I mean, uh, 2023, my bad. Jalen, so when you look at it, you were selected as an All-Pro. You was named to your first Pro Bowl this year. And where do you see yourself? Where do you rank yourself as a corner in the league? I would say number one for sure. I mean, I feel like there's not nothing that I can't that I can't do. I mean, I can go against the big receivers, small receivers. I mean, I can lock them up from press, off man. I feel like zone. I mean, I feel like the biggest thing for me was getting turnovers, getting interception. I feel like I took the ball away at a high level this year, and I mean, I didn't. I don't get too many targets, so I think taking the ball away the way I did, and I mean, I dropped two, so I mean, I should have had should have had six. So, I mean, I think just really going out there and locking guys up and taking the ball away, I feel like nobody did that better than me this year. So, you rank yourself ahead of all the other dudes that think they won. Yeah, no doubt. No so, doubt. when I look at you, though, big corner, can travel with receivers, I would like to see you play inside a little bit more, but mm -hmm. that, that'll that come over time, right. depending on what it is. I honestly say you balled out this year. You had 36 tackles. Tackles don't really mean a whole lot because if you, if you tackling – at the line of scrimmage, right. that's fine. But you're going to tackle somebody when they catch the ball. That's just part yeah, of it. Hopefully. The, hopefully, <laughs> right? The key thing is the batted down balls and the INTs. You had four INTs this year, and you probably should have had, from, from my recollection, you probably should have had seven, but that's why you play defensive back because you can't uh -huh. catch, you know, and whatnot. We all can't have a 5X gloves like you, big dog. No, but, but no, in all honesty, though, you did a really, you did a really amazing job at holding your own at that position. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying any names, but some people are saying you, you were snubbed by not being first team selection all pro. Right. I don't know how you feel about that because for me, all pro is all pro. Sometimes right. people get, you know, it's like the Hall of Fame. Guys want to be first ballot mm -hmm. versus just being able to say, I'm in the Hall. Got it. They get yeah. to complain about how you feel. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I was I was disappointed because I mean that was my goal to get first team All Pro. Honestly, I was definitely thankful for second team. But I think for me, I don't. Again, I don't think nobody did what I did this year as far as the yards given up. I mean the takeaways, the batted down passes, and I think playing the game the way I did throughout the duration of the season. I mean I feel like guys can play good for a month or so or a few weeks, but I feel like I played at a high level, start to finish in every game that I played in. So I don't think really any corners numbers I think that means a lot outside of tackling. I feel like they they did more than what I was able to do as a full body of work. So your team obviously based on the record, but then not on y'all record as much as it is Carolina's mm -hmm. record. Y'all have the number one overall pick. Fact. And there's a number of quarterbacks that's sitting at the number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. I, much like a former Chicago Bear and Jay Cutler, feels the same way about Justin Fields, that Justin Fields is on the trade and block people chopping, you know, right. that don't really know, feel like they should move on from Justin Fields. Jay Cutler, former Chicago Bear quarterback, says like I think. Keep Justin Fields, trade down, pick up something else that your needs are, right. and build the roster. 
How do you feel about that situation? I mean, for me, being in it is tough. It's hard because you you know the talent that's there already. You know kind of the situation. And I think it is tough for I mean, me and him having different coordinators, different coaches, different regimes come in and out. And I think it's hard to truly adjust as a young quarterback being able to do that. But I definitely, for me, can see the talent that he has and practice the throws that he can make, the accuracy. But I think you can definitely tell when he's confident and when he's not confident, when he's settled in a pocket and when he's not. And he just kind of looks... I feel like a lot different. I think just going in and saying, oh, we'll just give it to him. He's not the answer. I don't think that's that's it. I think it's kind of taking the easy way out and making the coaches not take accountability because I think the coaches have a big part in developing the quarterback. And I think that he hasn't had an opportunity to truly be developed yet with now going on his third coordinator in his fourth year. So I think, honestly, just it's about the people around him, I think. And I think it starts with his quarterback coach. It starts with the offensive coordinator teaching and molding and building him into being that court, um, that quarterback. And I think even like Mahomes, I mean, he wasn't just who he was when he first came in. He was behind Alex Smith. He got built. He got molded into being who he is. So I think it's really about that part first. And then I think if you get some dogs around him, some old line that can consistently hold up. I think a good running game, receivers. I mean, we got DJ and we were building some good things, I think, on offense, but we definitely need more, I feel like, as far as playmakers and guys to put him in the best position. How how did the uncertainty, like, certainty about Jalen at the quarterback position affect the locker room, which is the most important thing? Honestly, I think it made us play a little harder. I think it made us kind of gel together because, like I said, we know what we have in the locker room. And I think everybody from the outside in tries to paint the picture and kind of make you feel like that's the truth. And I think for us, it's like, now nah, we know the truth about Justin. We know the truth about um, the circumstances that he's been put in. And I think for us, we just try to go out there and back him up each and every week. So I, I know some people that know some people that know some people mm-hmm. that know some people that know you that know some people right. that say, <laughs> based on the way you played this year, that potentially there's a huge big payday coming your mm, way no doubt. that you're going to get the bag. And I want you to listen to what the front office said about that. Let's do it. Yeah, uh, we have really good communication. Uh, you know, the big thing was just kind of a break here after the season. Um, and then we'll start talks again. I feel really good about that situation. Um, Jalen's not going to go anywhere. Um, and we'll work through to get something done. Yeah. Bet on yourself this year. Like, right. right, you 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 said, man, I'm not, I understand y'all want to re-sign me on the low right now. Y'all want to offer me a pack of cigarettes and a, <laughs> in, in, in a soda pop and a Twinkie. I'm not willing to take that. Right. I'm going to bet on myself. And you bet on yourself and you won. You got your first all-pro nod, your first Pro Bowl nod. Where does things stand now in terms of contract negotiations I think it really stands all kind of the balls in my court, balls in my favor. I think really it's just a matter of time of when it happens. But I think really going into the negotiation, I don't think it's too much really to try to talk about. I feel like there's no reason why I can't be the highest paid corner in the league. And I feel like that's what I'm aiming for. That's what I'm shooting for. That's what I think can be done and should be done. I feel like I've had a good enough resume, I feel like, from my rookie year to now. And I think really this was just the icing on the cake. So I feel like there's not... Anything that anybody can say, I took the ball away. I got all pro. I got pro bowl. I mean, what else is there for me to get? So I feel like I'm definitely very deserving of the highest paid position. So, I mean, I'm going to go in and the ball is really in my court. So, I mean, it's going to continue to um, wait for them. And then we're going to reach and come come to terms on, on it. And hopefully it's what I think I'm deserving of. So you feel right now, just based on your play, your youth, that you're young, because you're young, right. you're long, physical corner, all of those things. You got, I don't want to call it leverage, but you have a little more negotiating power mm-hmm. than you had, let's say, in September. 100%. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Let's get into some recent news, some playoff news. Guys, the Packers snapped the Cowboys' 16-game home win streak and became the first seven seed to win a playoff game. Listen to what Colin Coward had to say about Dak. I mean, and everybody in, 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 can we have a real conversation now? Can we get uncomfortable, although it's like an adult conversation, about the evaluation of Dak? He's now two and five in the playoffs, and you watched he and Jordan Love. It wasn't even close. Jordan Love's just a better player. Have you never seen those two quarterbacks ever play? You land on planet Earth and you watch the game. Dak, the eight-year veteran, looked rattled and anxious and nervous and rattled and inaccurate. 
his ball placement was mostly awful. CeeDee Lamb could feel it. And he had the better O-line. He was at home. He'd been in this situation before. He had a number one receiver. If Jerry Jones wants to pay Dak like Mahomes, and he does, my question is, how good of a job is this? Dad, I'll start with you first. Is it time for the Cowboys to move on from Dak? No, I, I, Keyshawn, I don't think it's time. First of all, the only thing they should be thinking about is extending Dak Prescott. You, you cannot find a quarterback in the National Football League. That Dak Prescott is probably a top eight guy, depending on the day, in that five to eight range. You can't find that guy. It's right. just too many teams need quarterbacks that's out there. If Dak Prescott was a free agent right now, he'd go on the market and he would become the highest paid quarterback in the National Football League. There are no Patrick Mahomes is walking around. <laughs> right, Lamar no Jackson's walking around. Aaron, healthy Aaron Rodgers just walking around. Everybody keeps saying, well, Dak can't get us over the top, give us over. I watched Peyton Manning for years when I played in the National Football League, not be able to win in the playoffs. And then eventually, he won in the playoffs, he won the Super Bowl, and it became legendary. I watched John Elway never be able to win a Super Bowl. Eventually, he won two Super Bowls back to back. Right. So, I, no, no, not at all. All they need to do is try to figure out what they're going to do with their coaching staff and move on from there, Jalen. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I didn't watch too much of the game, but I feel like for me, it's more than just Dak's performance. I would say I think for the, for the defense, I think they got a lot to take in and look themselves in the mirror as well. Cause I feel like they played too good this year to go in and I think give up that many points against that offense. And like they even mentioned, they don't have a true wide receiver one. I mean, Aaron Jones is a heck of a running back and I got a lot of respect for the coaches over there as well. But I mean, I feel like there's no way they should have gave up that many air yards um, to to that passing game. And I think, and I also have a lot of respect for Jordan Love and played against him in high school, know him from a, for a long time. But I just feel like, I, I think that, def, that defense can do a lot better than what they did that game. Hmm. Yeah, on the other side of the coin, some folks are pointing at the coaching. Here's what Damian Woody had to say. I'm damn sure getting rid of the coach. I'm damn sure getting rid of the coach. I don't want to hear a damn thing. Listen, we talk about, listen, we talk about, I don't want to hear about no 12 and 5 wins. It's that's not it when it comes to the Cowboys. Everything when it comes to the Cowboys is about the postseason. We've been talking about it year after year after year. We just said the Dallas Cowboys, this was their best opportunity in like a quarter of a century to get to the Super Bowl, and they got their ass handed to them yesterday, and we're supposed to run it back? Mm. Like, come on, man. Like, He's Jerry, right. Jerry, right. Jerry He's Jones right, said right. it himself. Can't Jerry Jones said it himself. He doesn't have much time left. Okay? He doesn't have much time left. Running it back would be just stupid. It would be totally stupid to run it back. Jalen, please react to this. Do you think it's time for Mike McCarthy to go? Oh, I think that's a tough expectation, man, to just... Yeah. I mean, 12 and 5, you go in and you lose a playoff game, you should be out. That's a lot of wins to so just kick somebody to the curb. But I think, I mean, I feel like for so long that has been their biggest knack. The playoffs, they're always a dangerous team throughout the regular season. But, I mean, I, I don't know what's going to get them over the hump. I don't know if it's quarterback, if it's coaching. But, I mean, I guess if you restart it all, we're going to see who it really is. If well, they probably need another corner to go along with Diggs <laughs> yeah. and Bland. I know Stephon Gilmore is over there, but that, 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 that so don't worry about that. a lot that. of money for that. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't worry about that part. Look. Mike McCarthy, are there better options out there than Mike McCarthy right now? Yes. Do you explore those options with Dan Quinn not coming back because he'll probably get the Seattle job? If he, he probably won't get out the building in Seattle after they mm -hmm. interview him in person after this weekend's divisional round. He'll be their coach. So you start there. You're going to have to build a new staff on the defensive side of the ball. If there's a Bill Belichick, they need discipline. A lot of led the league in penalties. They do stupid things at times. Okay, move on from Bill Belichick. Mike Tomlin could be available coming out of Pittsburgh if he decides, hey, I've been in Pittsburgh 17 years. Things are stale now. It's time for me to look to do something else. He's not looking for total control. There's a Mike Tomlin in your future. Hey, maybe there's a Jim Harbaugh who wants to leave Michigan in your future. Maybe there's a Pete Carroll who's a little on the older side like Belichick but still has the energy to want to coach. There's options out right. there. So for me, I don't believe that they've gotten the most out of their talent, 
even though they're 12 and 5 for the last three years in a row, but yet and still hadn't gone to the Super Bowl advance, even to the NFC Championship game. That's a big problem for me. I think they should move on from Mike McCarthy and find somebody else. Okay. Well, on the Packers side, Colin Coward said, quote, I've never seen an in-season improvement of a quarterback like Jordan Love. Does this playoff win legitimize Jordan Love in Green Bay? Well, it, 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 you played against him. Right. You've seen him in high school. You played against him twice during the regular season. I personally always felt like Jordan Love was going to be an answer, maybe not the answer, but right. an answer for Green Bay moving forward. But what happens to us in, in sports or in society in general is we get caught up in something. So we watched Aaron Rodgers, I don't know, 20 right. years or whatever it's been at the quarterback position. So we don't think that there's anything other than Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers right. Same thing with Brett Favre. We watched Brett Favre for so many years when Aaron Rodgers came along. We said, ah, not possible. We never got a chance to really see right. Jordan Love. But for those that knew Jordan Love on the West Coast, when we knew him in high school in the IE or Utah State, right. we all knew, oh, if he get an opportunity and a chance, he's going to be all right. No doubt. Honestly, I feel like it's it was never in question for him. I think, like you said, it's just who he was behind. I think it kind of put him at an unfair advantage drafting him there, but really not knowing he was going to play, really. So I think, honestly, just his skill, his talent, his mind framing and being able to learn from Aaron Rodgers, a guy that we all know is going to be in the Hall of Fame, I think that only helped him out, especially with his poise. I mean, he goes out there, we try to rattle him. He was never rattled. Yeah. And I think you can see that you were able to see that this weekend, too, in the playoff game. I mean, that's a heck of a defense in Dallas going out there in that environment, playing in Dallas, and him going out there and performing the way he did. I think it just all goes to show what was already in him and then what he's been building these last few years. But, I mean, he's definitely a very talented guy. I think if they can get some more talent on the outside, I think they can be a very dangerous Yeah, team. the expectations for somebody... Okay, first of all, he's replacing Aaron D and Rodgers. Yeah, yeah, no You're doubt. replacing the dude that won four MVPs. Four, mm -hmm. okay? And a Super Bowl. And countless NFC Championship appearances. You can't expect for a young man in essentially in his rookie... This is... His rookie season as a right. starting quarterback. Yeah, he might have had a, a cup of coffee and a game or two along the right. way, but this is his first time as a full-time starter leading them into the playoffs, something Aaron Rodgers did not do. Right. Now, am I saying his career is going to end up like Aaron Rodgers? No, but you got to say that Green Bay, as, a, as it stands right now, they hit on Jordan Love whether people want to believe it or not. No doubt. And I think really, like you said, I mean, he, this is his first full year to really see. First full year. Yeah, no, doubt. no doubt. But no, nah, I feel like he, I feel like he has it. I feel like he has, has enough to be the guy there. I think the least of their issues is Jordan Love. Yeah, I guess you guys could say he's arrived. Uh, Jalen, when was the moment you felt you arrived in the <laughs> NFL? Ooh, shoot. My first moment. I would probably say my second, probably my second year. I feel like my first. Did you start day one? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. No, I, I mean, don't know. I don't remember. It's so long ago. <laughs> now, let me tell you. I, I didn't I'll start day I'll tell one. You, I mean, we all, I mean, you, you, you're you a different caliber guy. You grew in to be somebody. I'm trying to be like you. <laughs> um, but, I mean, honestly, I think for me, it was really my second year. After my rookie year, I feel like I had a solid campaign. But I feel like going into my second year, I think the first game that I did this was the Browns, Odell's um, coming back game. I ended up following him and matching up, having my first like uh, matchup in the NFL. Because I mean, I did it throughout college, but to do it in the NFL, I think that was something that was good for me, going able to make plays. And I know the high level guy that he is. And then really throughout that year, it was okay. Jalen, go match up. Jalen, go match up. Go match up. So go you take were starstruck when you seen OBJ? No, 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 no. I didn't say I was starstruck, <laughs> but I definitely have a lot of respect for his game and what he was able to do um, back in New York, of course, and then just in Cleveland. I knew, I knew, I knew what type of guy he was. So I mean, just coming and prepare, but. Getting that nod each and every week, I think that was that was when I knew, okay, I'm I, I can be somebody and I am somebody in this league. What about you, Dad? When's the first time you thought you arrived when you put on the the Jets helmet for the first time or when? Oh, I way back in high school. Before man. that, no, stop that. <laughs> I did that back in high school. That that's just that's, that's the easy. I just answered it. <laughs> he said, "When did I feel that's I what, arrived? Arrived in the league? Oh, day one though. Okay. That, when I got drafted, that was it was over. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was over." Understood. It was over day one. Now, in all seriousness, though, <laughs> I played well my rookie year, but we was we was one in fifteen. It was a a shit show. The coaches, it was it was bad. It was a bad deal. I felt like once I got Bill Parcells and Todd Haley and Charlie Weiss and Dan Henning and company, our offensive staff and Bill Belichick on the defensive side, I wasn't gonna be able to. You know, I just wasn't gonna look it back because right. they knew what to do with me. The first staff. 
they really, they, they knew what to do with me because they drafted me, but they wasn't listening to the general manager and the assistant general manager telling them, say, man, you got to use this dude a certain way. Right. They was like on some, it was almost like they drafted me to hate on me or something. Right. You know, it was a weird, it was a weird feel. But once they got fired and Parcells came in and they just, they just went to work and, and taught me all sorts of stuff. And then that third year, which was my first Pro Bowl, which was my, well, the rookie Pro Bowl was the rookie Pro Bowl. Back then they had the rookie Pro Bowl. But then my third year, I made the official Pro Bowl Pro right. Bowl. But you just knew. Like, it was, a, it was a, whole nother, a whole nother level. My first playoff game was my third year divisional game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I played on defense. I played offense. I ran what the ball. What position did you play on defense? Safety. What you mean? I had a pick. And a many, recovery. Who you hit? Are you serious who right now? Do we hit? need to run the highlights? Yeah, we do. Please. Man, come on, man. You ain't <laughs> never heard a dude in the game rush for a touchdown, mm -hmm. catch a touchdown, get a pick, and cause a fumble and recovery. You ain't never heard that. I ain't going to lie to you. I, I ain't never DB. heard that until I, I today. I played DB the whole... I played DB my entire career. Even at SC, I played DB. You just looking at me as a receiver, you don't really understand the game. That's why I'm telling you, man. You talk about five shots. You're going to lose four of them. Easy. No, 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 no. That's man, how I know easy. you. You can't just say that. You played DB. But I could catch. That's the difference. See, you say you had a hard time catching and getting interceptions to this no, year. No, 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 no. I didn't That's say that. That's what you said. I didn't, okay, go ahead. Did you not say that? No, no, no. I okay, said I didn't said. get interceptions. I had just a hard time catching them. It wasn't like I've just been dropping picks my whole career. Okay, all right, all right, I stand corrected. But yes, that <laughs> that's when I arrived. I would say the divisional playoff game, even though I balled out throughout the season, that divisional playoff game before we went to the AFC Championship, that's when I was like, oh, yeah, I'm him. Okay. Yeah. All right, more playoff news. Jared Goff led the Lions to their first playoff victory in 32 years, mm -hmm. beating the team that drafted him number one overall in 2016. Watch this celebration. Okay, I'll, I'll just say it like this. All right? Hey, you're good enough for Detroit, Jared. Yeah. Hey, hey, I love and appreciate you guys more than you fucking know. I promise you that. I love you guys so fucking much. So, Jalen, from a player's perspective, it's got to feel good to beat the team that said you weren't good enough, right? <sighs> Yeah, I think that that's tough. I mean, especially going number one overall like that and team. I mean, no, I I, I would have just said and done a lot more than what he said and done. So I mean, <laughs> I probably would have took a lap around. I mean, talked talked a lot more than what I think he probably did. But I think honestly, you just go back and you just think of the times and you think of the player that you were back at that time. And I think he's been able to grow a lot. Cause I mean, even for me, when he got traded over, I'm like, I don't think that's a good trade, <laughs> a good trade for them, honestly. But just seeing his pro his progress through through the years, these last few years, and especially with Dan Campbell, I think they've been able to mold and groom him to be the the quarterback that he is now. But he, I don't think he was always that in the you, beginning. You know, Jaden, I've never been in a situation where you look at it like Jared Goff and you say to yourself, I wasn't good enough right. to play for you. He took him to a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And when you take somebody to a Super Bowl, you didn't win it, but you took him to the Super right. Bowl. It was no a doubt. very uh, important piece to what they were able to do. Sean McVay got it right because he said, I can't win the Super Bowl with mm -hmm. this dude. Right. So he went and got a quarterback in his first year, Matthew Stafford, who needed some pieces around him outside of Kelvin Johnson to win a Super Bowl and win a playoff game. Right. So he was able to do that. The one, and, and you always want to gut a mother that treats you a certain way. Right, no doubt. When I was traded from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers after winning the Super Bowl to the Dallas Cowboys, I couldn't wait to play Tampa again. I had to wait to get to Carolina. Right. And play against John Gruden. But it wasn't a mission. My mission was a Prove to him you don't know anything about, about this game. Yeah. So obviously, you know, the rest was history. Both times I played against them. Dominated Let's them to a whole nother level. Dominated. First, first play of the game, about a 45-yard corner route touchdown. Mm. We get down to the 10-yard line, second possession of the game. We run a reverse to me for a touchdown to rub it in their face. <laughs> you know, so so it feels good right, no when you're in that position. 
It just for Jared, he can't look at it and be like, well, you know, but they didn't believe that he can win the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the difference. They right. just didn't believe that he could win the Super Bowl with him, even though he took him there. Yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking when you said that, I mean, he went further than Dak did, and they still believe, believe in him. So, I mean, I don't... Yeah, but is anything... See, here, here, here's how you got to look at it. Is there anything better mm. than Dak Prescott that a team is willing to give you? Mm. There was something better... Better, yeah. ...that Detroit was willing to give the Rams because Detroit said, well, Jared Goff is just as good as Matthew Stafford. But what we can do is we can move Matthew, get him off our books pick up some picks, mm -hmm. take Jared Goff, and be either in the same position yeah. or a better position so it became more of a business move mm -hmm. than it was anything. True. Where Dak Prescott's situation, the Chargers ain't giving up Justin Herbert. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes yeah. and Kansas City ain't giving up Patrick so Mahomes. Putting them in the I don't want Kirk Cousins. <laughs> I don't want... I, you, you see what I'm saying? Right. I don't want Russell Wilson. So when you start looking at it, it's like, I'm not necessarily stuck with Dak but there's, I'm not going to get better. Mm. You're just not. The top five quarterbacks, their teams, like you say, okay, you can take Tua. Man, the Cowboys don't want Tua. <laughs> like, that, that, you, you understand what I'm saying? I understand. That's, understand. that's how they look at it. That's how they look at it. They just, there's nothing that's better than Dak. So where you rank Dak at? I, man, I got Dak in that five to eight range. Because I ain't taking him. So who's him. the four before? I would probably, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Joe Healthy Burrow. And then at that point, we can start playing with the whoever's, right? Mm -hmm. We can start playing with Dak Prescott versus Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence versus Jalen Hurt. Like we mm -hmm. can start, you know, playing with it when we start to get to that point. Right. But those dudes that I mentioned at the front, they're not, they're not available. Right. You're not yeah, getting you're not him, giving them up. Right? You're just not. You're like, ah, no, I'm good. And I'm sure I might be missing a quarterback or something there, but you're just not. If you look at it, there's mm -hmm. a, hey, you can have Russell Wilson. We'll take Dak Prescott. they like, no. Nah, you good. Yeah, no way. Jalen, uh, I know you play the Lions two times a year, <laughs> NFC North rivals. Um, but I want you to be real. It's all facts, no breaks. Are, you, are they real championship contenders this year? Ooh. I man, you got to see them, man. You got to see them twice again. After you get this big old giant bag, no they get ready to give you. I, honestly, I think no. I'm gonna say no because I don't think they're. I don't think their defense is strong enough. I think you're gonna have to come. You have to come a lot with them San Fran boys. I think so. So I mean, I, I, I don't think their defense is good enough. See them, my former teammates, man. I can't have you up here. Aaron think. Glenn, that's my that's my running buddy. No doubt. You remember AG uh, Keyshawn? Oh yeah. Aaron Glenn's my running buddy, and Dan Campbell. We played together in Dallas, and me and AG played together in the Jets and Dallas. Mm -hmm. So I got. No, I mean, it's, I'm taking it's still Detroit. All good, but so you take Detroit over San Fran? Yeah, because I'm I'm not afraid of San Francisco. You say yeah? Yeah, I'm not afraid of San Francisco. Y'all afraid them. of San Francisco? Who? Y'all, y'all players in the NFL Stop. in the NFC. It ain't got nothing to do. I just don't think that the defense can hold up against them. Yeah, but that's that 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 may be true. But people said the same thing about Baltimore going in. They where's the closer at on Baltimore? All of mm -hmm. a sudden. Jadavion Clowney becomes the closer on the team or whatnot, right? right. Rokon Smith becomes a closer, your former teammate in Chicago. So when you look at it, Cleveland was able to touch him and get with him. I, I'm just, I'm not for the bully on the block. Right. The bully on the block don't, because some dudes can, can be got. No, on, no, on everybody that team. can like get some, got. Some dudes on San Francisco's defense, they can get got. No, I no. mean, you know, as, as much as everyone praised Ward and think he's like this shut down corner, in my eyes, I don't watch a lot of film. Mm -hmm. And I'll be watching some stuff. I'm like, huh? Because right, the no other doubt. dude, to me, D'Amador Lenore, to me, is a better corner. Mm -hmm. He can play inside, he can play outside. I watch, especially throughout the year, I don't watch Tredavious Ward get got when you're sitting there going, they, he what? <laughs> he, he, huh? <laughs> Right. But but that's just me because I'm looking at something totally different than other people. You know, I, I just think, I mean, I respect Brock Purdy. I think he's done a tremendous job. Debo Samuel, Ayuk, uh, Jennings, uh, uh, Christian McCaffrey, Kittle. They got some stuff. Right. But I think they can still be had. No doubt. I just don't think, I'm going to take San Fran's defense versus their offense before I take Detroit's defense versus San Fran's okay. offense. 
That's all I'm saying. I understand. Right. You're just well, scared of them, though. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the coaching carousel has been moving lately from Belichick to Pete Carroll to Nick Saban. And Jim Harbaugh has entered the chat as the NFL's top coaching candidate. J-Mac seems to think Jerry Jones has two options. Do you go Jim Harbaugh and he says yes, or do you call Bill Belichick and he says yes? My guess is this is Jim Harbaugh's job to lose. I think he's the better coach at this stage than Belichick, and I personally don't think that... Belichick's gonna gonna want to go work for Jerry Jones. I do think Jerry's probably smart enough at this point to say, you know what, I'm getting up there in age. My best shot is Jim Hall. Jim, I'm backing away. This is your show. Go win me a Super Bowl. Dad, who would you rather play for, Bill Belichick or Jim Harbaugh? I probably, I, I, and this could be a little bit of a, a biased. Opinion, because I I actually played for Belichick, um, in in was set in meeting rooms on the defensive side for Belichick. So <laughs> I probably would go with Belichick. And in look here here's in short order, if Jerry Jones is saying that he, you know, the clock is a ticking on him personally because he's a little up in age, and how much longer is he going to be able to go to games and? And, and be able to deal with this and do this in the stress level. I think Belichick is the perfect situation. One of the things that Belichick has always done and been successful at, winning games when he's had substantial quarterback play. Now you say, well, that's been Tom Brady forever. Right. Yeah, that's true. But he did win 11 games, I believe, with Matt Castle. He did win a couple games with Jimmy Garoppolo when they had to fill in for, for um, Tom Brady. He did take a Mac Jones team to the playoffs, so I'm not in love. I don't Mac Jones to me is a lifetime backup in the National Football League. You got a quarterback in Dak Prescott. Right. You got a receiver in CD Lamb and a tight end in Ferguson. If you you know Brandon Cook because you had him before, uh, you could get a bigger back. Tony Pollard could stay, but you need a bruiser. They got a defense. You could actually turn Michael Parsons loose and turn him into some of the things that you had in New England or with the Giants when you were the defensive coordinator. So there's some pieces there in short order that Belichick could utilize, and he knows how disciplined. I mean, he just it's just a different feel. I understand the Jim Harbaugh sexiness of everything. He just won a national title. Everybody's all high on Jim. Oh, Jim, he, he took San Francisco three <clears throat> NFC championship games. He did lose the Super Bowl to his brother. He So I understand he uh, resurrected... Uh, Stanford. He won at San Diego. I get all of that. But Bill Belichick, just something about him intrigues me for a short period of time at the quarterback, I mean, at the head coach position for the Cowboys. And Jerry is not a meddling owner like everybody tries to make it out to be. Jerry Jones, along with this guy named Will Clay and Stephen Jones, are the people involved in the front office that pick all the players and sign everybody. And no one could ever argue with any other players that they draft or any other players that they pick in free agency because they always ball with the Cowboys. It's the coachings that's always a problem. So my question is, do you think the defense, do you think the defense that they have as far as players, personnel, will fit the Belichick scheme or regime that he normally brings out? I think he could get them to play in a, in a, in, in his particular style of defense. I think he can. Okay. Yeah, I absolutely think he can. They got enough pieces on the defensive side. Defense was good. Mm -hmm. They no was doubt, good. No they doubt. were good defense. I'll they didn't show Dan up. Quinn, I think, also. Huh? So I'm saying Dan Quinn, to me, is a big part of that in the scheme. Yeah, they did, a, to... they did a good job yeah. defensively this year. At times, you want Michael Parsons to show up a little bit more. No doubt. I want 11 to, I want 11 to show up a little bit more. Um, he hasn't been a consistent uh, guy that you sit there and you go, yeah, I'm willing to give him $200 million to make him the highest played defensive player in the history of the game. Mm. You go back and forth with it, but he has certain potential. Can Belichick get that all out of him the same way he has with other players in the past? Yeah. Sure. Okay, well, we're seeing um, the NFL place an emphasis on hiring younger black head coaches who are also former players. We've got D'Amico Ryans, Gerard Mayo, and Antonio Pierce, who is coming off his successful campaign as Raiders interim head coach. Watch what Max Crosby had to say about him. 
it happens again, what does that mean for your future uh, as a Raider if they do um, not go with AP? Yeah, I mean, it's something I'm going to have to, re, you know, consider everything. You know, I, I, honestly, nothing's off the table. Um, clearly, I've made it very – I made it loud and clear that I want to be a Raider for life. I want to be here. I want to win here. I want to retire here. Um, but, I mean, if you go and start from scratch again – um, I mean, I, I, I got to consider everything. I mean, from everything. Jalen, what's your reaction to a star player vouching for a coach and putting pressure on his organization? <sighs> I hope they don't listen. So maybe we can try to make a little trade or something, try to make a <laughs> transaction and get him, get him in Chicago. But I mean, honestly, I think just overall, I feel like you just, you have to listen to that. I think you have to listen to some of your top dogs when they're, telling you about a coach. And I think just with Antonio Pierce, I mean, kind of knowing him for a little bit, but just knowing his personality, knowing his style, it's a lot that players can relate to and it's a lot that you can respect. And I think a lot of it too, and I think people don't really take into account is like, how can you, can you run through a wall for a certain coach, for for a guy when he's telling you to do certain things, when he's pushing you to be on your limits, to do certain things that you normally wouldn't do? Are you going to listen? And I think he's somebody that people, that people will listen to. And I think if you don't, if you don't take that into account, especially when a guy like Max Crosby is saying that, then, I mean, even for him, I mean, it's not a situation that you might want to be in. So I know if you don't want to be there, I think we got a spot for him in Chicago. <laughs> I, I, well, I, here's what I say, Jalen. Uh, being able to relate to your coach right. is key. It's, it's huge. Um, many, many times my coaches have come to me to not only talk about players, but also people they want to add to the staff. Right. That That's huge. And when you listen to Max Crosby or Devontae Adams talking about they want to play for Antonio Pierce, if you're Mark Davis, you got to listen to that. No you doubt. cannot make the same mistake you made with Rich Versace. Uh, Rich Versace is now the special teams coordinator with the Green Bay Packers, who was the interim head coach after they fired John Gruden. Mm. And they went on and went to the playoffs. And they should have won the playoff game in Cincinnati, but it was all weird. Joe Burrow throw, even though he passed the line of scrimmage and stepped out of bounds or whatever, and the whistle <laughs> blew and everybody right. stopped. They're saying the same things now. You made the mistake once. Don't make it again by listening to the outside media sources telling you to go get Jim Harbaugh. Right. Go get Jim Harbaugh. Because the players don't want Jim Harbaugh. They want the coach in Antonio Pierce with the tattoo on the neck, because it looked like I, it looks like me right, with no a big doubt. old two carat earring in the ear. That looks like me <laughs> driving up to the stadium in the sixty oh, sixty two. I think he came in a sixty two Chevy to the oh, with switches to the game. Yeah, you ain't you, you ain't seen that with nobody nah, else. Ain't they ain't doing, doing Kyle Shanahan ain't <laughs> driving that to the game. But that's relatable. Right, they feel that, and he knows how to coach. And it's just not son. It's just not the black young head coaches. You look at a coach like Dan Campbell, who is a player, right. who played, who looks like he can still play. They still engage. They, they feel him, right. Right? right? He got a former defensive player, pro bowler, calling the plays on the defensive mm -hmm. side in Aaron Glenn. Those players feel those guys. And so the league is a copycat league. I see Antonio Pierce still being hired by the Raiders and Jim Harbaugh either staying at Michigan or going to the Chargers or going somewhere else. But I see AP getting that head coaching job here in the next couple of weeks. Okay. I hope he does. Uh, ending on something light, Jalen, we couldn't resist playing this video for you. Check it out. What y'all got? I got a question for y'all first. Who knows what this is? It's a do-rag. Do-rag. What is this called? Okay. And what is this called? Ooh. What, what is this? A mess? Come on. Ooh, he don't know? Got him. It's called a lay down pad. It's all for your waves. How you get your waves right here, your hair. Doing too much. No, you're not. You gotta brush it. You gotta brush it, lay them down, and then tie them down with the. 360, though. They 360. 360. I'm woofing right now. So, yeah, wave check, wave check. He's still the wave god, or what? Break down the process to make the whole league seasick. That's crazy. Um, really? Oh, I know they still in there. Maybe you can see. Yeah, I see them. But I just got to cut. So I cut the ones on the side. You can't see the whole 360. But it really just starts with commitment. And honestly, I'll sit in meetings. We'll go over install. And I'm just brushing. I'm just brushing. <laughs> Coach talking. And you hear in the back of the room, shh, 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 
Yeah. But I mean, it really just starts with time, commitment, really. And then you just got to continue to process and you got to low know where your hair lays and how it wants to form to try to get the 360. So, I mean, it's a real a real formula to it, but I think it really just starts with commitment. You got to do a little research, but I mean, I think it's worth it. You got to do all that to get waves? No, 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 no. Anybody, you can just, anybody can just get waves and have a few waves in there. He said wave God. Wave God. Yeah, no, nah, you got to have the 360. They got to be I in there. If I cut my deep. hair down and brush it a couple of times, my wave's so big, man, you wouldn't even know. You could try to get a surfboard. <laughs> So you think, so which one do you think is harder for you? To catch three out of five passes on me or to, three out outdo, five. to outdo my waves? Which one is harder? Clearly, this dude needs to get some videos, <laughs> which man. Which one yeah. harder? You hate me. <laughs> come on, man. Which one harder? Oh, Lord, have That's mercy. That's all I want to know. I would say, I would say getting the waves would be harder. Nah. <laughs> man, this dude just said the way. Three out of five. Three out of five. See, that, that's the thing. But see, that's the thing <laughs> with these defensive backs nowadays. As, as my co-host on Undisputed would say, Michael Everett, do you realize the gauntlet of DBs that we had to go through? Y'all go, hey, y'all, these dudes, they catch for 80 balls, 1,500 yards. Oh, it's like, wait, wait, hold on, man. Do you realize the gauntlet of DBs from Deion Sanders at the top mm -hmm. all the way down to the puppies in Champ Bailey mm -hmm. that you had to go through in between Ty Laws, Sam Madison's, Patrick Sertans, Aeneas Williams's, Arian Gle Man, don't get me started on no DBs. Anyway, <laughs> what that's, it. <laughs> that's it for today. <laughs> I appreciate Jalen coming in, my son Keyshawn joining us. Hey, we'll be back with all facts and no breaks. Until then, it's Keyshawn Deuces.